Hey everybody, welcome into Old Mountain Bricks. Today we're doing something kind of fun. We're going to do a comparison video between these two Star Wars Battle Packs. I know what you must be thinking. They're different in so many ways, but they're the same in a lot of ways. So that's what we're going to take a look at today and see which one comes out on top. Of course, the first thing we need to do is we do need to open both of these, build them and the side builds and put it all together and see what we come up with. So let's do a quick time lapse of that and we'll see what we can get into. That number 75345 containing 119 pieces released in January of 2023 and contains three numbered bags. Number 75372 containing 215 pieces was released in January of 2024 and contains three numbered bags. I thought it would be fun to put both the speed build videos side by side like this since we're doing a comparison video. Both were overall similar, nothing different really between the two. You build the troopers of course and then some of the side builds. They both took about the same amount of time, surprisingly. So let's go ahead and take a look at both of them and see what we think. Okay, and here are both built next to each other. We'll take a quick look at both of them and then we'll start kind of comparing. So the first one, this is the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack, set number 75345 with 119 pieces. It is like a follow-up to the one that came out about 2019. People didn't like this one as much because of some of the helmet holes and it just wasn't as good as the original with some of the builds that came with it. Over here, we've got the Clone Trooper and Battle Droid Battle Pack, set number 75372. With 215 pieces, it, you can see the number of minifigures and a few extra builds over here, including like the Spider Droid and some other droids and such. The builds are kind of okay, but that's the thing we want to talk about. When you're looking at these Battle Packs, the one on the left here goes for about 20 US dollars. The one on the right goes for about 30 US dollars. If you look at it at purely a price per piece ratio that a lot of folks look at Lego sets are, it does not meet those thresholds. Um, the other thing people like to consider that many figures of the average variety, such as like a clone trooper, are worth about five dollars, which is about that. So that's twenty dollars right there. So that kind of makes sense right now. Over here, you've got the four there to get up to twenty plus two regular battle droids, which are really only worth maybe a dollar or so. And then the super battle droids, I'd argue, because these are just returned for this set, are maybe worth about three to five dollars as well. So that's where a good bit of the value is, because the people who buy these are wanting them for the minifigures. Um, let's take a look at the builds here. This one is a nice little cannon that can be shot out and everything. So let me see if I can trigger that. And that thing goes pretty far. I think that went across the room. <laughs> so that's a fun little build. A lot of these are useful pieces as well. So if you were to buy this, you could use these pieces maybe for something else. Uh, it is have a seat for one of the clone troopers to sit in between here if you wanted to. Over here comes with even more stuff. You've got homage to the original speeder bike battle pack, which I think I had, but you can kind of put two clone troopers on it, just like the box there. We've got this little command station where it has a stud shooter, the little uh, skiff speeder that you can put the battle droid on, and this cool spider droid, which looks pretty good. This can turn, these little missiles can be pushed out to kind of do that. And it's got good uh, suspension with kind of the flex joints on there and everything. Uh, but when you put those aside, what I was wanting to look at is 20 versus $30. Is Lego heading toward doing more of sets like this, um, where you're paying more for something similar to get these extra pieces, which folks don't really want as much in general? Or as opposed to this $20 set, which again, the main reason you're buying these battle packs is to army build. So you get like 10 of these and have a bunch of these folks here. But you can see almost each of these are also different in this particular case as well. So it doesn't lend itself as good to army building as the original 501st battle pack. Or even something like this. This one's good because it has the three, but then it's got a clone shock trooper as well. If you're just wanting regular phase two clones, you're just getting those right there. My thinking is Lego is going to start doing more of these because people are really just wanting it for the figures and these side builds are just accessories. So they're able to justify the price of the set being a little bit more with it being like $30. Plus it includes those other droids here. So it's, it's not a one for one comparison that we're looking at, but it's enough to where it's something concerning to me as someone who doesn't buy battle packs very often that the side builds are often uh, a miscellaneous part of the battle pack experience so I hope they continue to do more of these cheaper sets I've been saying that here the last little bit I think you can still make a great Lego Star Wars set that is like 
10, 15, 20 dollars versus the ones that are like 650 dollars, like the Venator, um, in order to still get a similar experience and love for Lego Star Wars. Um, so I think both of these are good in their own way. If I had to say which one is better, I would say that the one on the right here is the better set just because of what it does include to make it more inclusive for army building, which are these three Phase two clone troopers, two regular battle droids, and three super battle droids. So you could get a decent army out of this if you were to buy a number of this $30 set. The shock trooper isn't very good uh, as far as for army building unless you are wanting an army of shock troopers, but the builds are okay, but they do help that army building aspect where you could have a number of these as opposed to, I mean, you can have these in an army, but it's not really the idea behind the army building as far as putting them all on the base plate and putting them all out and everything. That is just my two cents. I just thought when I saw these, again, I got this one kind of on sale because it was like the damaged box and everything. So I just thought it would be fun to kind of compare. Rather than just doing a review of each individually, I thought this would be fun in order to just take a look at them side by side. So if you're sitting in the store and you know what you're looking for, you have an idea of what it really looks like all together here. I think both are good in their own way, but I, like I said, I think the one on the right is more traditional battle pack style, even though it's $30. So that's something you just have to weigh. Hopefully, I know like the Ahsoka Troopers came out since this one here, and that one was okay, but hopefully they can just do more of these basic ones. I know uh, Marvel is going to start doing something like this with like the uh, Iron Legion and some other things. So it's going to be interesting to see how that compares to traditional Lego Star Wars battle packs. But that will do it for today. So if you enjoyed this video or thought it was helpful in any way, leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments what you think of each of these sets. Is one your favorite? The Is the 501st battle pack your favorite or the clone trooper battle and droid pack over here? So let me know in the comments. But until next time, thanks for coming by Old Mountain Bricks today. Have a good one.